It's Tozer. <laughs> I think it's time for coffee. It's warm out here. 92. Oh, that's good. <coughs> you know, over the years, there's always been a wide variety of people that have well, quite frankly, wanted something so bad that they would change the message in order to fit what they thought was the best way to present it in a new and exciting way to get people to do something that they didn't want to do at first anyways. And then, because they had done it in such a way that it confused the issue, they had to come up with extra things to call it something else in order to make it straightened out from what they did wrong in the first place. <laughs> What's that mean? Well. We have people now that run around saying, are you a Christian, and then are you a true Christian, and are you a born-again Christian, then are you a Christian that's spirit-filled, are you a baptized spirit, are you a baptized spirit, are you a baptized Christian, are you a Christian that does this, does that, and the other thing, or do you celebrate this day and that day and the other day, and do you do this and go there and roll around and jump up and down and get excited and do whatever. Whew. It gets to be where you don't know who is what and what is where. Because... Presenting salvation in just simply a way of saying, hey, you know what, God wants to save you from hell and you're going to hell or you're going to heaven and get right or get left. Well, you know, it sounds good. Okay. I want to go to heaven. So then the person says, oh, well, all you got to do is, you know, confess with your mouth and profess Jesus Christ and but you shall be saved. And so they do it and then they go right down the street and sin and act the same way again and they think they're saved because that was the way they were told. That was what they were taught. And that was what they were brought up with sometimes. And so you get this whole big old confusion about what's going on in the reality of a person having a intimate, real life experience of God. Jesus said, come unto me. I think that's pretty simple. He said, follow me. I think that's pretty simple. Then he said, if you'll follow me, take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. That doesn't get so simple. Then it gets even more complicated when he tells everybody that's in the Sermon on the Mount, if you do these things, then you're my disciple. But if you're not, I don't have anything to do with you. That's not my Jesus. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. Because, you see, somebody didn't present the rest of the story to you. Because it's not just a matter of saving you from sin, but it's providing a way for you to participate in what God is in in accomplishing his will for the world and its ways. In other words, you weren't saved so you could go do your own thing and then become your own person and be this wonderful, abundant, you know, like, Gaga person and then say, well, I did it in Jesus' name. Because Jesus says, there are many that will come to me in those days and say, Lord, didn't we do all these things in your name? And he'll say, I never knew you. The point is, do you know Jesus? That's the point. And the reality of knowing him is simply how you get there is up to you. But if you know him, you know him. I mean, you're talking to him. He's talking to you. You got a connection. Now, people get into this knowing the right Jesus, the wrong Jesus, or any Jesus. Personally, hey, if God is talking to you, he'll sort it out for you. You got to get close to God and know him. Then let him work through you to begin to accomplish in you the knowledge of the Bible and the Word of God so you'll know that He's the one directing you because He can teach you and He's provided for you. But don't get caught up in all these carried away things about trying to figure out who did what the right way. But do what God says today. And as we examined in this whole devotional series, as I've said from day one, by the time you're done, you'll hear, his, you'll hear God speak either in His Word, through His Word, by His Word, in the devotionals, through his devotionals, in some devotional, in your circumstance, by circumstance, some way of circumstance, or he'll speak audibly to you. And my personal opinion is that if you were seeking with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength to hear him, Jesus promised, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. That's not reading, that's hearing. So, at some point in time, count on it, God will speak to you. Today, Explore, in Tozer, explore God's high purposes in salvation. Make you perfect in every good work to do His will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in His sight. 
through Jesus Christ. Hebrews 13, 21. There seems to be a great throng of professing Christians in our churches today whose total and amazing testimony sounds something like this. I am thankful for God's plan in sending Jesus to the cross to save me from hell. I'm convinced that that is a cheap, low-grade, and misleading kind of Christianity that impels people to rise up and state, because of sin, I was deeply in debt, and God sent his son who came and paid all my debts. Of course, believing Christian men and women are saved from the judgment of hell, and it is a reality that Christ our Redeemer has paid the whole slate of debt and sin that was against us. But what does God say about his purposes in allowing Jesus to go to the cross and to the grave? What does God say about the meaning of death and resurrection for the Christian believer? Surely we know the Bible well enough to be able to answer that. God's highest purpose in the redemption of sinful humanity was based in his hope that we would allow him to reproduce in us the likeness of Jesus through us in the once sinful lives that were at enmity with God. Jesus wants to live in us and God wants to create through us the image of his son that we might touch the world and save many souls unto salvation. So acknowledging this, we are to humbly testify with the Apostle Paul. I have been crucified with Christ and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me and gave himself for me. In other words, if you think that salvation is only about being saved from something and not going towards something and not doing something, then you've got the wrong message. Somebody didn't give you the rest of the story. And Jesus didn't make it clear enough except to say that all you need do is ask him and he'll reveal it to you. All you need do is read it in his word, the red ones. <laughs> And it's pretty obvious because lots of people use the old analogy of Jesus is your Savior, but is he your Lord? And have you made him in control of your life or are you in control? So whenever they were trying to make up these new ideas of how to make sure that you understood what you're getting yourself into without making it too complicated so that you'll get in first and then find out later, they would make up these stories about, is he in the seat of your heart, or is he on the throne of your life, and he's doing this and doing that, and a lot of people got all confused about it. The blunt truth is, are you doing what Jesus said, and do you know what he said? Pretty simple to me. Jesus came. Jesus died. He said why he came. He said why he died. He said you were supposed to have a relationship with God the Father. You don't have a relationship with God the Father, and that's obvious, because you're not doing what God said. Now. I'm going to tell you what to do. And that's what Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount. So, if we do what he said, guess what? He says, I know you, and I'll accept you, and I'll love you. If you don't do what I said, guess what? You'll claim to know me, and I'll say I never knew you. I think it's pretty simple. How did it get so complicated? But then again, I think that it's a little tougher than it looks. As a matter of fact, I think there's more to salvation than meets the eye. And I think there's more to a relationship than just simply saying, I accept you and then I go on my way. It doesn't work that way in a marriage. So it makes you think it'll work that way with your God.